Let's go to the US now. And Donald Trump has joined Elon Musk in a live interview streamed on Musk's X platform, formerly Twitter. The interview was viewed or heard by many, many millions of voters, despite technical problems blocking some people and Musk blaming that on some sort of an attack. Trump spoke about the assassination attempt against him, describing how the turn of his head at that moment meant that the bullet took his ear rather than at his head. And he described that as a miracle. It hit me at an angle that was uh, far less destructive than any other angle. So that was the miracle. That was, yeah. for those people who don't believe in God, I think uh, we got to all start thinking about that. You have to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a believer. Now I'm more of a believer, I think. And a lot of people have said that to me. A lot of great people have said that to me, actually. This comes as Vice President and Democrat candidate Kamala Harris is lauded by the media. She's been given star billing by Time magazine, even though she's dodging any media scrutiny. Her strategy is working with polls favouring her in the key swing states. As I put it to Kristen Tate, the race is looking good for Harris at the moment. Yes, well, that's because the media is successfully making this an election about personality and not policy. This is all about vibes and Kamala Harris being this new exciting candidate, the first female of color, and a lot of voters are buying that. And unfortunately, Chris, Trump is not doing enough to make this election about policies. Every day he should be out there hammering Kamala Harris on what a disaster the country has been thrown into under her leadership with President Joe Biden. But sometimes Trump gets sucked into these, uh, you know, food fights, political food fights. And when he does things like saying, oh, Kamala Harris isn't really black and makes these kind of comments, some of them are pretty funny. But but it does not help his case in terms of getting support amongst those moderate voters who are buying into a lot of the garbage being fed to them by the mainstream media about Kamala Harris being this inspiring figure, which she's not. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, totally predictable that she's going to get this honeymoon period from the media. People are going to be lauding her for all the reasons you say. Uh, but the critical thing is whether this lasts, whether this can last all the way through till November till the election or where people or whether people start to see through through her. And and critical if people are going to see through her and talk about policies is her being exposed to media scrutiny. But she's done no interviews since she's been declared as the nominee. And, and have a listen to this exchange because she seems to be in no hurry to put herself under any scrutiny. There's been a lot of questions about when you're going to sit down for your first interview since being the nominee. Do you I've, have any I've talked that? to my team. I want us to get an interview scheduled before the end of the month. This is amazing, Christian, that in your system you can be at this level and be in this contest and not be doing interviews. Well, why would she do interviews? It just presents unnecessary risk. She's in the perfect situation right now. She can kind of do the Joe Biden basement strategy. She can sit back and let the press do all the work for her. Why get out there and present a risk of embarrassing yourself in front of voters or saying something uh, kind of stupid? We all know Kamala is not a gifted speaker anyways. She's constantly mocked on the right for her word salads and saying these awkward things. And of course, the infamous cackling laugh so if I were advising her, I'd be telling her to do the exact same thing. But yes, it's incredibly frustrating as Republicans. And that's, again, why Trump needs to be out there hammering her and Biden on the disaster that their administration has been on policy. It is amazing to watch uh, because in our democratic system in Australia, we are used to politicians having to front up to press conferences and interviews all the time. Yet, as you say, Kamala Harris is getting away with this because she can. And incredibly, some media are actually defending this strategy. Have a look. It, what has struck me since Donald Trump's um, press conference is sort of the sort of highbrow nature of the press uh, coming at Kamala Harris, saying, "Well, she, in my view, whining that she hasn't, she, she doesn't talk to us. She hasn't done a um, a sit down with us. She hasn't done interviews with us. Right now, is there a real need for her to sort of, you know, get the imprimatur of the press on her campaign?" Yeah, the media making the argument for the lack of scrutiny, which is extraordinary, Kristen, because it's not about the media. It's not about fronting up to the media. It's about fronting up to the public, to voters, to opening yourself up to democratic scrutiny for the sake of voters. 
Right. Well, I mean, at this point, the media is just an arm of the Democratic Party, so it's not particularly surprising. And make no mistake, Chris, if she does do a sit down, she's going to choose a journalist who won't ask her any tough questions whatsoever. Uh, but the big question is the one you posed earlier, which is, will this honeymoon phase last long enough to get her across the finish line? And there's a very real chance that it will. Most of the time, these candidates are, of course, picked way earlier in the process, at least even if it's not official that they would be the candidate, we would know months earlier who the candidate would be. So that honeymoon period will have usually a four or five month time frame and then it kind of dies down and things go back to normal. But because the Democrats have pulled off this coup by forcing Joe Biden out and forcing in Kamala at the last minute, they may just pull it off where they get to that election day before the hype has died down. It's yet to be seen, I'm not sure, but it, it's possible. <laughs> We will see. I think you're right that Donald Trump needs to find his target, find his line to attack Kamala Harris on these issues of substance. And while he hasn't really been able to do that so far in his public comments, some of his advertising is attacking her record on policy. Have a look at this. I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. I, well, actually, the nonpartisan GovTrack has rated you as the most liberal senator. <laughs> you have any plans to visit the border? We are going to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. I am in favor of saying that we're not going to treat people who are undocumented and cross the border as criminals. That's correct. That is correct. Well, there's the clue there, Kristen. It's all there in his own ads. Donald Trump's got plenty to work with. Yes, uh, this is exactly the line that Donald Trump needs to take. The Donald Trump campaign is doing a fabulous job. Unfortunately, it's Trump himself who can't seem to stay on message. And you know it pains me to say that. I badly want Trump to win this election. I think the future of the country depends on it. And hilariously, Chris, while all of this is going on, Kamala Harris is running ads claiming that she's a big border hawk. She's literally running to the right of Trump on the border as migrants pour into this country by the millions. So she needs to be called out on this issue and many others. If this becomes a popularity contest about who's the kinder person, who's more popular with the celebrities, who's younger, Donald Trump will lose. He needs to save his campaign and step up with the messaging. But I love that ad and I hope that he can, he can sort of imitate that messaging day to day when he talks to the press. There's a long way to go still, Kristen. We'll see how it all unfolds. Thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you very much, Chris.